Hey, 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 welcome in, welcome in. If you're watching this, you're probably gonna be watching the replay. So if you are on Facebook or uh, Instagram, throw out a hashtag replay. If you're on YouTube, throw down a hashtag replay. I am Christy, your paparazzi independent consultant number 6442, and welcome in to the Tuesday Tea with me. Today we are on part three of the four part series that is going about, that is talking about me and how did I become a six-figure earner in this direct sales, multi-level marketing business and how you could get started with us too and learn about my journey. So as I continue to do these Tuesday teas and share business information with you about business growth in any industry or in direct sales or specifically with paparazzi accessories, the one that I decide to do, you have an idea of how the heck am I able to give you information or advice on what to do. So today we're going to talk about abroad and back because that's my story. I lived abroad for three years and then I came back to a business ready to get up and go. So I want to talk about that. While I share this, I want you to get your share on, shout out some of your fellow Facebook friends who are in a business and want some tips on staying in your own lane, staying laser focused, because that is what I'm really going to get to on my point of living abroad and coming back with my business. Because I definitely had to, when I hit the American soil, had to stay in my own lane and keep my blinders on. So I'm going to get this share on real quick and you go ahead and do the same. Oh, I forget how to do this sometimes. But good morning and welcome into the Tuesday Tea with me, Christy, your favorite independent, paparazzi independent consultant. All right. I'm getting my share on. Now, you know you have a button down there where you can get your share on too. But make sure when you're sharing, if you're watching me live, you probably don't want to do a watch party. You probably just want to share to a group or because you can share this to a group because I'm not I'm not doing any, any jury sales. So you can share this to a group and you can share this um, in Messenger. You can share it on your page. You can get your share on or just shout out some of your friends in here. It's like, girl, you need to come over here and listen to this. If you, ah, I forgot to put this. If it is your first time in here, drop a number two below. All first timers joining me for my Tuesday tea. Drop a number two so I can shout you out and follow up with you. See if you have any questions about anything that I have shared with you on this Tuesday tea with me, Christy. And it's less than 30 minutes. We will not be here all day. Good morning, good morning, good morning. All right, got my shirt on and I'm ready to talk some business with you. So again, welcome in. My name is Christy with the Paparazzi Assessors Independent Consultant number 6442. And you are in here with the Tuesday Tea with me. This is part three of the series. So, so far, if you've missed it, you can go back and catch part one. Part one is before Googling for ways to make an extra thousand dollars because that's how I found my business. I Googled ways to make an extra thousand dollars a month. So before I Googled that, what was I doing in my life? What characteristics did I always have as a person? What kind of hustle did I already have or not have? Did I not have any hustle and I came into this? Or did I already possess some hustle? So what skills did I already possess that allowed me to get to where I am seven and a half, almost eight years later, where I am bringing in six figures? The second part was ground floor. Because when I started this business, there were only 5,442 consultants who had ever tried this business in all of America. And so when I started, I was at the ground, 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 ground floor. No brand recognition. Nobody knew about paparazzi accessories. Nobody knew about $5 jewelry. Hey, I didn't know anything about it. I just knew it was $5 and I was confident that people would buy it. Then part three, that's what we're talking about today, abroad and back. So if you listen to the other parts, I Googled ways to make an extra thousand dollars a dollar extra thousand dollars a month found paparazzi accessories on a stay-at-home mom website wasn't big on wearing jewelry myself but i knew there was a market out there and i also knew it wouldn't require sales experience for five dollar accessories because what do people young teenagers when they're first allowed to get a job what are some jobs that they go get they work in retail stores that sell costume jewelry right it doesn't require them to have a lot of sales i worked actually in high school in a retail store uh, what was it called? I can't remember what it was called, but it was in the mall. It's where teenagers came and shopped. And the mall look, where I was located at, actually, it would be pimps that would come in and buy things for the women they were pimping. So they'd, be, they'd buy outfits for them to wear, right? That's where I worked when I was in high school. 
And they didn't ask for my expertise. They didn't expect me to be an expert on it, but they wanted my opinion about would this earrings go with this outfit or would this bracelet or ring or necklace match the neckline? I could give them my opinion on that. I was a teenage girl, right? So in my mind as an adult, it wouldn't require a lot of experience to be able to share with women $5 accessories. So I jumped on the opportunity. Well, I did start this business right at a time where recession was really hitting. So recession had been going on for maybe about four years, but it was finally hitting the school system because the school system, which is what I was, I was a teacher at the time, the school system operated off of taxes. People who own their homes and pay their taxes. Well, at this time, 2012, 2013, people were defaulting on their home loans. They were being kicked out of their homes. It was a result of, and there were foreclosures everywhere. So as a result of foreclosures and people who kicked out their homes, that means less taxes were going into the school system, which is what pays teacher salaries. So they were fine for some years. They had reserves, but just like me, I had reserves, but gas, cheese, um, food, milk prices were going up ridiculously, right? And so I was finally hitting the point in my family where our reserves were like being depleted, which is why I was Googling for ways to make an extra thousand dollars a month. Well, the same thing was happening with the school system. Their funds were being depleted. Their backup funds for emergencies was gone. So now they had to cut teacher's pay. So as a result of cutting teacher's pay, I need to find some money. Well, also around this time, I was working in one of the most diverse schools in all of America. Not just what Chrissy thinks, this is fact. So in my school that I was a teacher at, and then I also became an instructional coach, so I was coaching teachers, we had over 44 different languages in our school from kindergarten to fifth graders. 44 different languages. That's not including dialects. So we would get a lot of refugees. So at any time that America was saving a country, going over to help them, and they were deciding to let the people who were in the refugee camps come over to America, we were the school, it was us, us and a place out west, but we had even more than them, that would get the area in America that would get all the refugees. So these are kids who've never been in school before. They've never had like toilets or plumbing, centralized plumbing like what we have in our school. And they would come into our school and then we'd have people from the same country who would be like, hey, because one little kid had been there for a couple of years, so he knew enough span, enough English, and enough of his language to be able to translate. So we'd have the kids like, ask him such and such, or ask her such and such. And they'd start talking, they'd be like, mm -mm, same country, different dialect. We don't understand what each other is saying. So 44 different languages, not including dialects. So I was in a perfect environment where I had the experience necessary to go teach abroad. And there were teachers from my school who had did that. So they went over to the Middle East and they came back in the summertime and were telling us about their experience teaching in the Middle East. So teaching Arabic speaking students how to learn English because their country in the United Arab Emirates, most people know Dubai. I lived actually 45 minutes away from there in Abu Dhabi for three years. And I went over there and I was teaching Arabic speaking Arabs how to speak English and, and reading math. I didn't teach their social studies, so the Arabic teacher would teach them social studies because I don't know their social studies. There's a lot of history in America I don't know. I definitely can't teach them about the Arabic or the um, Arab or United Arab Emirates history. So I went over there, did that for three years, chasing money, honey, and I won't lie, the money was good. So the way the system worked is they paid us so when we made fifty thousand dollars like we literally made fifty thousand dollars and they paid for health care so i was sitting in a public school googling ways to make an extra thousand dollars because they had increased my health care so i had to pay more out for health care but they had decreased my pay so i was getting less money in but sending more out for health care and it was not adding up and i was like wait so my $40,000 a year, which really ends up take home being around $20,000 per year, is going to be almost tripled. And I get to put all of that in my pocket. They're going to pay for my health care, which is good health care over there. They're going to pay for my housing. They're going to give me an allowance to put money, to put furniture and to buy a washer and dryer to fill up my um, place. I'm out. Now, I was at a good place with paparazzi. I had hit a premier, actually, I had hit premier director as soon as I moved over there. And I had in my mind, oh, I'm about to get this money. Like, this was my mind. This is what happened with me and my business. <clears throat> and so I was convinced I was about to go get this money. I was going to get this paparazzi money while I lived abroad. And I was going to get this a rap money while I was living abroad too, right? And so I went over there and nobody told me about the time difference and how that really wouldn't work. 
So it was 12 hour time difference. So when they were awake over when we were awake over there, Americans were asleep. And when Americans were awake over here, we were asleep. So it was very, very, very hard to try to keep up with my team and support them and still do my business because of the time difference. In addition, <coughs> excuse me. So I went over there thinking I was about to bring home some bacon for real. And that was sort of cut a little bit. I tried in the beginning, but that being able to stay up awake and then go, it just wasn't working. So, but my team, thank God, did not stop working. So now I didn't have a plan. So I would come home every summer. So I've still bought jewelry. I still stayed a active consultant in my direct sales, multi-level marketing business. And how I did that was I would buy jewelry. And I would send it to three places in America. Because when we came home for the summer, there's three places that we would visit. We would go to Georgia, which is where we lived before we moved abroad. We'd go to Chicago, because I had family there. And we would go to Ohio, because I had family there. So I call it the uh, triangle effect. That's what we would hit every summer we come home. Well, I would ship jury to those three locations. And when I came home for the summer, we would party. And when we would party, meaning I would share jury, they would buy it. That'd be money in my pocket. And people would join my team. So I support them as much as I could, but if you're aware of how Facebook works, we have Facebook Live now. So if I had Facebook Live then, I could have really done even more with my business, but it didn't exist in 2012, 2013, 14, or 15 when I lived abroad. So that was not an option for me when I lived abroad. But what did happen is my team kept working. Now, could I possibly take responsibility for them, some of that? I could possibly take some responsibility in the fact that I did as much as I could prepare my current consultants before I left with all the tools they needed to be a success, right? But, it's my daughter calling, oops. But, <clears throat> there's only so much I could do. And this was truly a lesson in how much your team needs to see you working because they do what you do. Actually, they do half of what you do. So in our team, in our business, we have uh, different levels of partying, what we call ourselves lives of the party. So that's how much jewelry we buy and then how much jewelry we sell, right? Because if you buy more, you sell more, you sell more, you need to buy more. Well, so if you are like life of the party and you buy 5,000 pieces, then you can probably say your team will buy 2,500 pieces. They're going to do half of what you do. Well, I wasn't doing a lot. And if I was, they couldn't see it because I was over broad doing it. Now, I was doing it, right? Because since I moved back to America, teachers who were over there with me have moved back to America and they've reached out to me and joined my team. So, and I did have that in mind. I did. I was like, I know eventually I'm coming home. Don't know when. It took three years and I came home. Now, what is this idea? What is this story about? The story is about running your own race. When I came back to America, I had a team of 10,000 consultants because my personally sponsored kept working her business. And while working her business, she had business partners and they were working their business. She got, they got business partners and they were working their business and they got business partners and they were working their business and they got business partners. So I came back home and I was like, oh, I have 10,000 consultants. Wait, there's like a Facebook live thing going on. And I went and got a job. I was bringing in good money with my commission. I jumped right into selling jewelry again, going live. It did take me a minute to go live because I am from the old school of Pop Rock Says where we didn't have Facebook Live. So I was like, I don't need to go live. I can throw parties at home, which is what I was accustomed to doing. I can send out basket parties, which is what I was accustomed to doing with my busy schedule. So I'm going to do that. But eventually, I started seeing how much money was being made, how much jewelry was being um, sold, how many lives were being changed on Facebook Live. And I was like, I'm not missing this money. So I jumped on Facebook Live too. So when I came back, I reached out to my team, the ones who were still sort of doing the business and the ones who had fallen off but were still considered consultants. And I was like, hey, I'm back. I'm jumping back into this business in America, more so than I could do when I lived abroad. Are you with me? Some of them was like, nah, I'm good, you know, glad you're back. Welcome home. Not my thing. I didn't pressure them. I was like, I can show you, but I can tell you because I'm about to jump on this and in this and do it way more than I could when I lived abroad. And then some of them were like, yes, Christy, thank you so much. I'm so glad you're back. I didn't realize how much I needed you until you were gone. And then once I got back, I was like, this is what we're doing. Let's do it. And they jumped on and got back with it. So one thing I've learned for sure, because as a result of being gone for those three years, some of my team members, some of my business partners, businesses, 
have soared, have surmounted, have killed. Like they're millionaires. Like they are, I'm a six figure earner, but they're like a six figure earner. <laughs> they're like six plus six plus six. Like they six figures is long. Mine is nice. I have definitely hit the six figure mark and I am proud of the work that I've done to get there. But because of that time period that I was not here in America, their business have soared and I have been playing catch up. But I had to put my blinders on. I couldn't compare my story to their story. And here's another thing I want to tell you. If you've fallen off, you can come back. But you pretty much got one time to do that, business partners, business people out there. If Target has something that happened, for example, there are businesses right now that are going bankrupt. And some people automatically think bankrupt means they're closing their doors and never coming back. Hmm, ask Trump how that works. Not exactly true. They're not closing their doors and never come back. They are going bankrupt and reconfiguring their businesses because the days of brick and mortars aren't so much anymore. A lot of people are buying a lot. And actually, it's only a small percentage, but it's growing every year. The number of people who are buying things online and the cost of storefronts for even for big companies is expensive. It's a lot of overhead to keep and maintain these storefronts. And especially if they are in a, um, a great shopping center, all right? So a well-known great shopping center, those storefronts cost even more. So they're paying for location, they're paying for the scenery, and something like, it's not adding up. When they have thousands of stores across America and they're paying for those locations, those storefront locations and all those, and their numbers for sales have dropped. It's just not physically making monetary sense to keep doing so. So they go bankrupt. And they come back with a whole new model. So like you might see Payless shutting down, but their model might be to go online. Or you might see Claire shutting down um, as in going bankrupt and you're like, oh, they're never coming back. They just may come back and build in a different way, changing their whole strategy. Cheaper to do it that way, bankrupt, than to do it a different way. So my blinders had to be on. I, can't, I couldn't look at them and be like, oh, woe is me. I'm not growing like how they're growing. I haven't hit how they've hit. I haven't um, sold jewelry like they've sold. I had to, what are my goals? What does Chris need to accomplish? I have always been a year over year and a month over month and a week over week person. How did I do in February of last year? Now, or in March, we're in March, in March of last year. I looked at my numbers in March of last year. I gotta go to my calendar and see what I was doing. My sales were good in March of last year. That means I have some work to do because I want to beat my numbers for March of last year. So there might be people, or not even might, there are people in my team and part of this business whose sales are running circles around my sales. And so I could give up and be like, oh, I'm not, I, I just, this is not gonna work for me. I can't do what they're doing. I don't need to do what they're doing. But I need to, do, need to do better than what I was doing at this time last year. If for no reason, then the fact that I know better, so I must do better, right? And you always know better in this business if you are going and getting professional development. If you are building yourself and your knowledge about business. You are in retail business. So what happens in retail business? What are people right now doing in the retail business? What are successful people doing who sell jewelry? Go learn about it. What are people who sell jewelry online through social media? What are they doing and having success? Go and learn about it. One thing I did for sure is anybody who was at a level right above me or two levels above me, I would look and see what they were doing. Now, if I'm a star consultant, which is the uh, when you first start the business, there's no reason for me to try to do what a fashionista is doing because we are at very vast different. If you look at what I was doing at Star Consultant and what I'm doing at Fashionista are very different things. Because one, I didn't have a team at Star Consultant, so I didn't have to spend my time, eight of it, 80% of it on my business and 20% on my team. There was no team. So I was just out there booking vending events. My time wasn't spent scrolling social media. My time was spent looking for events. My time was spent looking for hosts, asking people who wanted some free jury so I could get it to them in a party aspect. That is what my business consisted of. Same, so I would always, I was a star consultant. I was looking to see in our business, we get an email every month of who ranked. So guess what I did? In 2013, 14, 15, 16, and 17, when those emails came out, I was like, okay, I am a premier director. Who hit executive director this month? And who hit producer this month? I would look at that report and we, I'd go follow them on Facebook. What are they doing? 
because what they're doing is what I need to be doing to hit that rank. Ooh, congratulations to the A-listers and to the Jetsers, the ones who are now in the top 0.1% of the business. Great for them. But I can't do what they're doing right now. I'm not nowhere near that. I follow people who are right above me. <clears throat> so those are the things that I did when I had to come back and put my blinders on and focus on doing better for my business and being happy and excited. I was extremely happy for the people who had been here in America and who caught the wave and that I missed when I was abroad and who were building their businesses and were doing great. I was happy for them because they were able to pave the way for me to see that this business could do way more than the $1,000 a month that I had Googled. I like to think I'm an optimistic person, but I am a realist, right? And so if I can't see past the numbers that I'm looking at and I can't see past certain things that I was actually keeping myself at a certain level because it was just an extra thousand dollars I wanted. And I reached the extra thousand and I was like, well, let me just go for 3000. I tell people all the time, if I had started off with wanting an extra $10,000 a month and believed that it was possible, I would be making that or, or I would have been making that sooner. But I didn't believe that. Until I saw people in this business doing, I was like, oh, we can make that kind of money? Oh, I'm coming for it. It will be mine. And the thought process wasn't that, oh, that's great for them. I can't do it. No, the process was, that is great for them. I'm coming to do that too. So I just want to come here on part three of being abroad and back and share with you how I was able to, one, so some people may say, she's been in this business eight years and she's only a uh, fashionista, which I just hit two days ago with my amazing team because they're growing and I'm growing. But she only hit fashionista? There's people who have been in the business two years and they're way past that. Well, part of them being way past that is that they've been here present. I wasn't even on this side of the world. That's one thing. The other thing is they weren't standing in their own way. I literally remember having a conversation with people and saying, I don't know about moving up that fast. Like, they might flop. I don't believe in that, making that money that quick. And now, which is what I'm going to talk about next week on the next Tuesday Tea, is if I know then what I know now. And I'm sharing what I know, if I those points with you so that you don't go through it. You learn from it and you surpass what kept me back because I didn't know these things then. And I wasn't doing these things then. Like, for example... Wait, I can't give it away. You got to join me back here next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, we're going to talk about if I knew then what I knew now. Honey, I had hit six figures way before today, way before 2019. So thank you so much for joining me in here. Remember, part one was on before Googling making an extra thousand dollars a month. What was I doing? And then number two, ground floor. Do you really know what you're asking for? Are you really wanting to be in a ground floor opportunity or is where we're at, which is still considered ground floor, but not as ground floor as when I started, is where this business at right now <clears throat> a better time for you to start? Because not everybody's built for the ground floor, for the learning and for the beginning stage where the business has to change over time. <clears throat> and then today was abroad and back. What happened when I lived abroad and coming back and keeping my blinders on and running my own race and beating my best, all right? and But not being so blind that I couldn't see what was causing other people's success so I could follow in the same steps. Don't reinvent the wheel, people. The steps for success are very outlined in business in general, in direct sales in general, in multi-level marketing in general. I just happen to think we have the easiest product ever, <laughs> to share with people and get sold. So I'll see you back here next week, Tuesday Tea with me, Christy, at 9 a.m. talking about if I knew then what I knew now. And today, it is still early. OMG, it's before lunchtime. So you have time to turn your day around. No matter how it's going on, you can control it. So start off by handing out five compliments. Do it with a smile. The good Lord gave it to you. You might as well share it. See you guys back here next Tuesday. If you were coming in here to see some jewelry, I will be live on my personal page at 12 p.m. for some lunchtime live shopping. See you later.